Hello, and welcome to another lecture from CyberMD. Today we'll be covering premature atrial contractions, or PACs. Please be sure to like, comment, and or subscribe to all of our content so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources to students around the globe. Let's dive right in. A premature atrial contraction, or a PAC, is exactly what it sounds like. It's premature contraction of the two upper chambers of the heart, the atria. Let's get going. PACs occur, again, when the atria, the two upper chambers, contract early and or irregularly. The exact cause of PACs is still unknown, but several factors have been identified as contributing to its occurrence. These include heart disease, cardiac hypertrophy, sodium channel mutations, beta agonists, chemotherapeutic drugs, myocardial infarctions, hypertension, and heart failure. It is important to note that PACs can occur in people of all ages. They are most prevalent, however, in both younger patients and older patients. In a normal heart, the sinus node controls the rate and the rhythm of the heartbeat. It is theorized that in PACs, there is an abnormal level of automaticity in the cardiac muscle cells. Other theories include the presence of an ectopic foci that takes over as the primary pacemaker. This leads to an alteration in the heart rate and rhythm, which can be seen on an EKG. The primary symptom of PACs is palpitations or a fluttering sensation in the chest. Despite this being the primary symptom, PACs are typically asymptomatic. The evaluation of PACs starts with a thorough medical history and physical exam, but the next step is a 12-lead EKG, which is the most important diagnostic tool for PACs. The EKG will show early beats originating from the atria, which are different from the normal beats originating from the sinus node. This can help distinguish PACs from other cardiac conditions. On the EKG, PACs appear again as early beats, either as isolated or as a series of early beats, before the normal sinus beat. They may appear as a P wave that is different from other P waves. A different shape or a position may give away a PAC. This is a critical aspect of the EKG as it really helps you to diagnose and figure out when PACs are happening. In many cases, PACs are benign and do not require any treatment. If the patient experiences symptoms, lifestyle changes, and avoidance of triggers may be recommended. Medications such as beta blockers may also be prescribed to control the heart rate and rhythm. It is important to monitor the patient's condition as some individuals with PACs may be at a higher risk of complications. It is important to differentiate PACs from other cardiac conditions, such as PVCs, or wide complex tachycardia, as well as narrow complex tachycardias. A thorough evaluation, including an EKG, is essential to differentiate between these conditions. It's crucial in making the correct diagnosis and in choosing the appropriate treatment plan. The prognosis of PACs is generally really good. In most cases, they are benign and they do not lead to any significant cardiac events. However, patients with underlying heart disease may be at a higher risk of complications and it's important to monitor their conditions closely. Complications of PACs can occur in individuals with underlying heart disease. These can include atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, as well as cardiac failure and stroke. In conclusion, PACs are a common condition that you may encounter on the USMLE Step 1 exam. Understanding them is crucial and remember, in order to get the correct diagnosis, you have to get an EKG. Lifestyle changes and medications may be necessary to manage symptoms, and it's important to monitor the patient's condition and manage any underlying causes to prevent complications. Thank you so much for tuning in.